Did you know that a small fraction of the potassium that you eat in bananas and other foods is radioactive? Hopefully actually solving this problem will allay your fears about that rather than create new ones. Uh, the problem reads, while most natural potassium nuclei are stable, potassium-39 or potassium-41 nuclei, uh, there's about one hundredth of a percent of potassium atoms are radioactive potassium-40 and they will radioactively decay. They have a half-life of 1.26 billion years. So the question is, what fraction of all the potassium nuclei in your body will undergo radioactive decay in the next one year period? Well, in the previous lecture, we introduced the mathematical model that can be used to work out half-life questions. And that is that the fraction remaining is one half to the however much time has passed over the half-life time. And so if we uh, solve the one-year question, that's going to be one-half to the one-year over 1.26 billion. So that's 1.26 times 10 to the ninth years. And if you calculate that out, 0.5 to the power of 1 divided by 1.26 times 10 to the ninth, which gives me 0.9999999, keeps on going for a while. So there is less than 0.01% have undergone this radioactive decay within one year. So already, you know, one hundredth of a percent of the potassium in a banana is radioactive in the first place. And then of those, less than one hundredth of a percent have uh, decayed after a one year period. So if you wanted to wait for 99% of that potassium in, uh, to decay away, how long would you have to wait? Well, you can use the same expression, uh, but now the fraction remaining we want to have uh, is just 1% or 0.01 expressed as a decimal. One half is 0 0.5, uh, and this is to the however much time over 1.26 times 10 to the ninth years. And now to recall something you probably learned back in high school mathematics at some point, uh, you can take the log of some number to the power of another number, and that's equivalent to that coefficient or that power moved to be a coefficient uh, times the log of the base number there. We're going to use the log operation on both sides of this equation to get the exponent to come down. So I can write that the log of 0 0.01 is equal to time over 1.26 times 10 to the ninth years times the log of 0.5 using that property that we just talked about here. Log of 0.01, the log of 0.5 are numbers. So if I rearrange this to solve for time, time is going to equal 1.26 times 10 to the ninth years um, times log of 0 0.01 divided by log of 0.5. And that's also something we can calculate. Log of 0 0.01 is negative 2. Log of 0.5 is negative 0.3. So if you divide one by the other, you get 6. You multiply that by 1.26 billion years. Uh, and you get a really big number. 3, 6, 9, you get 8.3 times 10 to the ninth years, or 8.3 billion years, uh, which is a long time, longer than the Earth is thought to have, ex had, 
existed uh, and long past the time when the banana would have rotted away. So this highlights, you know, not all radioactive activity is inherently dangerous. As the book mentions, things that have really short half-lives often aren't too dangerous because they have generally undergone all of the radioactive decay um, before you would even encounter them. Things that have really long half-lives aren't necessarily inherently dangerous either because it takes so long for the decay process to happen that you're likely to encounter very little of the radiation in the span of your life that you are in contact with this material.